You know, despite the fact that we always talk about how the Arizona Coyotes are kind of irrelevant in today's NHL sphere, it's weird how there are legitimately so many interesting, weird, funny, and overall just intriguing storylines going on with this team. And I am very guilty of perpetuating the status quo of Arizona being interesting, despite saying many times in my own personal beliefs and in videos in the past that they're not. But the reality is there are indeed a lot of things to talk about with the Coyotes, and because my Vancouver Canucks are getting involved in this one, I just had to get it out there, you know? So today we're talking about three things with the Coyotes first and foremost. It's the Oliver ekman Larson negotiations, which we're not actually going to be talking about OEL, we're talking about somebody else in the context of those negotiations. We're also talking about Taylor Hall, and finally, it is Nick Schmaltz. So, starting things off with the Oliver ekman Larson negotiations, there are so many different ways we can go about discussing this topic because we have talked about this a ton over the past few days. However, we have ourselves a brand new piece of information that has come to the forefront, mentioned by Elliot Friedman in his quickie blog on Sportsnet. Let's read a paragraph here together. The Arizona Coyotes like the Boston Bruins prospects more than Vancouver's, but on the weekend it seemed like the Canucks were the more motivated buyer, liking the idea of a long-term left side of Ekman Larson and Quinn Hughes. I like that a lot too, my goodness. It is believed, though, that Arizona asked about Thatcher Demko, which would have been a non-starter. Now, a non-starter is defined by Google in the informal fashion as an idea that has no chance of succeeding or being effective. And yeah, that's kind of a non-starter. Thatcher Demko, man, he is a Vancouver Canucks goaltender who definitely would not have been touched in a trade scenario like this one. Now, I will say, Canucks fans were kind of giving the boot to the Arizona Coyotes after this information was revealed. I mean, it's not even really technically revealed, it's just a belief held over here and mentioned in the article. But, you know, mega props at least, because as the GM of the Coyotes, you have to be in a position to at least ask about it, right? At least ask, at least make it worthy that you have this conversation, because even though you're going to get no, which is the very likely answer that Canucks fans were expecting Jim Benning to end up giving, at the end of the day, you're a GM, you have to explore all options, you have to have these conversations. So, Thatcher Demko, Arizona Coyotes interest, that would have been cool, but nah, the Canucks are not going to give that up, especially in an Oliver ekman Larson situation where the guy's making $8.25 million until 2027. It's a lot. And I will at least give Jim Benning a ton of credit over here because the way that he's handling this negotiation, I think this is a comment that I saw on Reddit somewhere, it doesn't really feel like the Canucks are desperate to do it. Because at the end of the day, Arizona doesn't have any leverage. Like, Arizona is in a position where they want to trade this guy, and the guy's only two available teams are Boston and Vancouver. He's got a no move, so you're not allowed to just trade him wherever. You have to go by his terms, and that's kind of what he laid out. So, for Arizona in a position where they need to move the money, it's certainly not in their ball court when it comes to these negotiations, and the Vancouver Canucks have the luxury to be patient with this. So, good on them at the very least. However, we have ourselves another piece of Arizona Coyotes news that we wanted to talk about here in the video today, and it revolves around Taylor Hall. Take a look at this tweet from Darren Dreger earlier yesterday. Sources say the Coyotes are shopping the rights to Taylor Hall. And this, indeed, is kind of just like taking a big wound that you have and putting a leech right on it. Sure, it kind of hurts, sure, it kind of feels weird, and sure, it kind of doesn't really look all too great, but at the end of the day, it helps out a tad. That's what they're trying to do over here, trade away Taylor Hall, who is a guy who's probably not going to come back to Arizona in any respect anyways, and at least try to salvage the idea that you had him. Trade him away, trade the rights at least, for anything, a second, a third, a fourth, or whatever, so that another team in the NHL has the opportunity to shell out some big bucks and get Hall onto a contract before any other team can. 
That's kind of why we see these negotiations go down. We had some speculation as to whether or not Tory Krug would have the same thing happen to him. That was actually like a week ago, and we had word that, oh, Tory Krug is going to be traded within the next day, and it didn't happen. So that's kind of interesting to see. I definitely do understand the philosophy behind that because, hey, we've spoken about it a ton. The Coyotes don't have anything going for them ever since their draft pick in the first round this year got taken away. Their second this year got taken away because of their draft violations and next year's first as well. The Coyotes only have one top three round pick in this year and next year combined. So it's really not a good situation for a team that has an aging Phil Kessel who is declining, who is losing one of their top superstars in Taylor Hall, and who may even be losing their captain in Oliver ekman Larson. not to mention their goalie in Darcy Kemper. It's not great, so you try to salvage every little penny you can get, which is what you're trying to do here when you're trying to trade the rights to Taylor Hall. So, next up in the Arizona Coyotes front, though, it indeed is quite a little bit of a bigger story, because David Pagnotta of the fourth period had himself a piece that he wrote earlier yesterday, my latest on Mike Hoffman's future, touches on Calgary, Buffalo, Jacob Marstrom, etc. It's on his website, thefourthperiod.com. Take a look at this tweet over here from the Charging Buffalo. It describes everything we just saw. Dave says, the Sabres have been linked to trade discussions involving Arizona's Nick Schmaltz, Boston's Jake DeBrusque, and Columbus's Josh Anderson. Now, I get that each three of these ideas here can be their own separate videos, but that's kind of not the point here. The point is we're focusing on Arizona, and thus I thought I would throw this in here too. Nick Schmaltz, interesting little discussion over here on this guy. I was always a huge fan of Nick Schmaltz back when Brock Besser was playing with the University of North Dakota because the CB. S line. My goodness, I remember that line right very so. The Drake Kajula, Brock Besser, Nick Schmaltz line that tore up college hockey that eventually led to the North Dakota Fighting Sioux winning the national championship. I saw a ton of potential in Nick Schmaltz because the way that this guy, Besser, and Kajula all played together, it was magic on the ice. Not to mention Troy Stetcher on the blue line, too. Oh, man, it just absolutely warms my heart thinking about former North Dakota Fighting Hawks playing together. But Schmaltz is a guy who was initially a Chicago Blackhawks draft pick who was traded over to the Arizona Coyotes a while ago in that Dylan Strom trade. It was a very weird, interesting trade because Strom, obviously, the third overall pick in 2015, he was a very highly touted prospect who wasn't really panning out in Arizona or Phoenix, as I should say. But Dick Schmaltz is a guy who didn't really play all too much back when he was acquired by the Coyotes because he was out due to injury. But in this most recent season of play, the 24-year-old was able to get himself 45 points in 70 games played. Certainly not bad and he still has a lot of development to go through, in my opinion. I would say that the best is yet to come for Nick Schmaltz, but if this is a guy that the Buffalo Sabres are interested in, then you know, I think it kind of does make sense. Schmaltz, to me, has always been a center, because when he played with North Dakota, he was a center, especially with the Blackhawks as well. He was a guy who suited up at sea once in a while, but with the Arizona Coyotes, he actually moved over to the left side, playing alongside of the top dogs in the desert, Christian Dvorak and Connor Garland. So even though my initial thought after seeing a trade idea like this, I was like, okay, well, the Sabres have Stahl, Eichel, Cousins, and Middlestad. What do they need another center for? You take a look at it, you see, okay, he plays on the wing too. That actually could be somewhat valuable for a Sabres team that indeed wants to actually get over that hump. So Maybe trying to capitalize on a 24-year-old Nick Schmaltz who does probably have better days ahead of him. It would make sense in my book. It's just, what exactly would you give up? The Coyotes, they want picks, so the Sabres, I mean, they have some picks, so we'll see if that is an idea that goes through, but obviously I'm just kind of spitting here as well. There are two other forwards, DeBrusque and Anderson, that according to sources, the Sabres are also interested in as well, but... For now, this video has been focusing on the Arizona side of things. So what do you say? Talk to me in the comments about that. Your Demko and the Coyotes talk about a Taylor Hall trade and the Coyotes and then Nick Schmaltz and the Sabres because there is a ton of stuff going on here. And even though Arizona is considered a boring team, they still have a very good diverse set of news coming out of their situations every single day, especially with this OEL stuff with Boston and Vancouver kind of taking over Vancouver sports over here on the west side 
in BC. So comment down below if you think I hope you enjoyed this video. Show that Shrosa 99. And bye. <laughs>